Okay, I think we're about to begin. Um, if you could just put in the chat box whether you can hear me or not, that would help me out. And while you're doing that, I will apologize for the background noise. I am at the Lifelong Learning Center in Norfolk. I was testifying at um, Visioning Hearing on Education. And so I just got finished and I come out and I'm kind of in the commons area in a corner. So if you hear things, I apologize. But I will go ahead and, and I've got some great new information because I've been visiting with senators all day on um, blended learning. The NAR. Um, it's going to cover just kind of the basics on blended learning. Um, I wanted to get it out there and, and kind of let teachers and schools know what is blended learning is. So the re reason that there is so much talk about the learning is it's a Nebraska statewide initiative. Um, about two years ago, Nebraska decided that blend ed would be one of its initiatives. And um, I would say it took me a good year to really figure out what um, that was referring to. And I wasn't the only one because there's so many definitions out there. It can look so different. And so until we wrapped our heads around the fact that it's not a single model or it looks one way, that I really started to understand it and get appreciation for um, how good it is and how we um, should definitely be doing it and it'll benefit our students. You see here there's a blend ed initiative um, and that is the definition that the state is using. An element of student control over time, place, and path. And um, you'll hear that quite a bit and I'll kind of talk about what that means. And at any time if you have any questions just go ahead and put them in the, the um, chat box down there. All right, the statewide initiative has many components, um, but some that you'll probably hear about is the Learning Object Repository, or a LORE. And in the state of Nebraska, we are going to use Safari Montage for this. You may have heard about it. Um, here at ESU 8, I'm about ready to get teachers to use it. Um, we're still in the setting up of the server, but um, it will not be long. I predict, if not before, for sure, right after Christmas, that we'll be rolling this out to teachers. A learning management system, or an LMS, this could be an Angel, a Blackboard, a Canvas, or some other form, or maybe even just Google, using um, Google Classroom, Google Documents to do this. The Federated Directory Service System, what this means, it's a single sign-on. So a student would log into like a portal once and they could have access to their Google account, to their learning management system, to this learning object repository, um, possibly to like Khan Academy, um, other digital resources that might be provided to them. So that's kind of what's been the holdup in our area, just trying to get that single sign-on figured out. And we're very close. And then of course, with everything, um, we are really focusing on the statewide professional development part of this initiative. What is blended learning? Well, it's face-to-face -face plus an online component, and you blend it together. One thing I was telling superintendents today, it doesn't look the same in any two classrooms, on any two days, um, in any two schools. So I might blend my learning environment one way one day and it be completely different the next. It can be very simple. It can be very high tech. Um, and I'll give you some examples. And actually, you'll probably find out that you are already doing many components of a blended learning environment in your classroom. All right, I'm going to pull over a video, and this takes me just a second to do this, um, that I want to share with you. We went to Lawrence, Kansas a couple weeks ago to look at, um, they're really doing some great blended learning things, and they have a little video that I want to share with you. Get it here, and I'll get it started. Um, please type in there if you can't hear. Could we increase 
resource for the teachers that would free up their time to spend more time with students either one-on-one -on -one or individual. So after our field test in the spring of 2013, we knew we were going to move forward, but we needed to select a learning management system. We decided to select Blackboard because it was more the drive off the lot ready. We had two tools that our professional educators use in the classroom, ways to monitor student achievement, ways to engage students. If you walk classroom, first of all, you would probably walk in before the bell because students are eager to get started. Definitely not going to be able to run to the front of the classroom. There isn't one. They have electronic devices out, iPads or laptops. Students working on the computers through Blackboard. Sometimes it might be an individual student. Sometimes they might be in partners. Lots of conversation going on, collaboration, lots of discussion. In a blended environment. It's a lot easier to interact with the teacher and work at your own pace and to learn how you want to learn. I'm not busy at the front of the room being like, look at me, pay attention to me, and doing the lesson for 40 minutes, and then I have three minutes to get to them. I get to like multiply myself by because I've put videos on there self explaining Some of the choices she gives us are we can sing a song, we can do research, write it in a Word document, we can put it in a discussion board, and we can just tell her. I like that idea there's video points for her to get activity um, so she can read it or she can watch a video, she can read it over as much as she needs to, she can replay the video if she needs to. She comes home just super excited and talking a mile a minute. Somebody would much rather sing a song um, than write a uh, why not? Student engagement is so hot that they constantly want to get on Blackboard because they know that it's engaging and fun activity. It's really cool because I love having all this technology there. I had kids coming up to me the day we got access to Blackboard going, is there an app? Can I get the app on my phone? I found that most of my students were telling me that they had solved their own problems or that another student had explained something to them. In math, I'm ahead of some people, so I help them with problems that they need help by. My favorite is there's no failure. Um, you're very successful. And if your grade was below something, you would be able to move the next journal entry, so you'd always be checking your grades on Blackboard. In a blended setting, I hold students accountable for that relearning, and what I've found is that the students are interested in relearning and then approach me for opportunities to demonstrate what they learned. It's just created this sense of success. The kids are very excited to come. They come in at 7.30. School doesn't start until 8.05. When I was in, I decided to log into Blackboard on Discovery so that I could stay with my class. We step out and just watch the kids work either in unison or they're just so engaged that they lose all track of time. That to me is authentic engagement and that's what we're producing in these classrooms. I am more energized about teaching and more proud of what I do because of blended learning than I ever have been before. I know my students better. I know that they are 100% engaged from the minute they walk in the door until the minute they leave. Because they're fun. Okay, now let me see if I can pull back my full screen here. Just give me a second. Okay, now I'll get back to my PowerPoint. Um, once again, I apologize for the noise. This is being recorded, but when I listen to it, if there's too much background noise, I'll record it and post a better copy of it. Um, if that's a problem. What I really like about this video is not that it's the Blackboard that they're using, um, but it's a K-12 experience. And that's what blended learning can be. It can be pre-K through college and should be. And that's what we've had a lot in our discussions today. So why do blended learning? Well, the biggest focus in one of the goals of the um, 
Senate's visionary LB 1103 is enrichment. Um, they want en kids to be, not enrichment, engagement. They want kids to be engaged. And um, I read an article that a high school teacher, um, a ve veteran teacher, she was taking a position as a becoming a teacher coach. And so for two days, she followed high school student, um, shadowed a student, and she found by the end of the day that a student in a typical high school day sits and gets information over 90% of the time. And that's not engagement. So blended learning is just good teaching. It differentiates. It personalizes that learning. It gives students some choice and some say and some direction, but not complete. So I don't want to scare a teacher when I say that. But um, it does give them a vested interest because they have some form of control. It also provides a very technology-rich environment, and that's where students are. They, they're way ahead of us, usually, in the technology and that's how they want to get their information, and this allows that to happen. A couple things here. What students can expect. Um, expanded learning opportunities, personalized learning, they're going to have to be driven. Um, there'll be some blend of face-to-face, -face, some online, um, a lot of collaboration, and um, definitely be able to use that technology, and a lot of flexibility in their environment. They could be getting some of this information. You saw the young girl said she was homesick. She logged on and she was doing her work and was part of the discussion group. Um, so they don't have to be sitting in that row in your classroom. What teachers can expect, um, hopefully a very engaging classroom, um, positive environment, more project-based learning. Um, you've maybe heard of flipped classroom. Um, and, and these decisions of what students are doing still need to be data-driven. And so I think that that's important always. It's not just fill in their day. Um, Senator, oh, I forget which one, asked me after I testified that, um, you know, do I expect this curriculum to be rigorous? And rigorous isn't the word I would probably use, but I think it definitely needs to be at a very high level. Um, and we expect kids to, and so we have to maybe search out and find some of this curriculum that meets that um, buzzword rigor um, that they're using, but um, so I think that's an important part also. What parents can expect, this can be in a fundamental change in the way the teacher and the students approach learning, and um, a blend, some of this learning can be taking place at home or um, at school or on the bus. Um, it's going to be more tailored to their student, and I think their students are going to be more ready for college and career. What does it look like? Um, I want to give you some examples and um, kind of just, there's so many ways, but I'm going to show, throw some things out there so you can actually get a picture. I'm a visual person. Um, this is a visual of a face-to-face -face classroom. Um, it's self-paced learning, hands-on and coaching happening, a virtual piece to it. Um, so some examples might be, so let's say we have a fifth grade class and they're studying fractions. Um, one group possibly that's really struggling could be working maybe with the teacher and on t using tangible things, measuring cups um, and whiteboards, figuring out just how, what a fraction is, um, and then maybe working on that, adding them, or um, uh, trying to get move into that multiplication and division of fractions. But they can't multiply and divide if they don't understand the concept. So they could be working. They could have a group that um, is online um, piece. I actually was looking online, and there's a lot of different practice um, places that they could go online for all levels, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, fractions. They could be um, on Khan Academy and having Saul Khan, you know, teach them through and work through some. And you might have some that get it. They get the fractions. They get the multiplication, the division of it. They're, they would pass your competency um, test for fractions. 
you might have them doing something like um, finding five careers that they use fractions with and then trying to connect with a professional in that career, um, bring that information back to the classroom, a collaborative project or something like that. In a high school, an example, um, an anatomy class, one group can be learning the bones of the hand. You could have some that are connecting with an orthopedic specialist, maybe learning about injuries and um, the career there. And you might even have students taking um, a college level course on, on anatomy, maybe a, a MOOC, which is free online course, but they have the option then to pay for it to get the credit. You could take these from Harvard, you could take it from your local community college. Um, but it depends on where the student is at. You have to be studying bones at the same time type of thing, or um, the hand. You know, it, it's cool. um, I was reading, this is a different example, but I was reading about a school that in the summer, they their students got their health and PE requirement by giving them, they gave them a health monitor or a heart rate monitor to wear. They worked out at a local gym, they kept track, they, you know, kept a food journal and did all this stuff. They met and grouped and blogged online and, and they come back in the fall and that credit was already, um, they received their credit for their summer work. Um, and so it can look a lot of different ways. That's, um, that's the beauty of it and maybe the curse of it to, to first get your mind wrapped around it. Any questions? I've thrown a lot out of there. I wanted to kind of try and keep it basic, but um, and know that if it's something you're interested in, we are looking for some pilot teachers. Um, kind of, you know, say, yeah, I'm doing blended ed. This is what it looks like, and to kind of, you know, have other teachers in your school be able to say, oh, yeah, I can do that, or I'm already doing some of that type of thing. Um, so, interested in. By all means, let me know. Um, we actually have some coming up. There is what we call an Intel online blended learning course on blended learning. And it'll be a one day face to face. And then you have um, follow up, cover, um, I think it's two modules in the face to face. And you have a follow up, but you'll have to complete three modules this time. To complete the course but that's and for that one day face-to-face -face, there's actually a stipend and a sub pay stipend available so if that's something that some of you are please contact me and I will get you that information also I guess I would just close if there's not any questions if you have questions just type them in there or you can feel free to email me at a later time um, Blended learning, I'll say again, is really just good teaching. And um, the senators did address that they, they agreed that it's reaching out to all students and they want students to be career and college ready. And they questioned if um, our pre-service teacher programs at our colleges are preparing teachers for this. And I would say at this time, no, um, but uh, it, it's some place that we probably need to go. Okay, the Blend It. If you are participating in the Blend It through the Perkins Grant, it is the same Intel course um, that I was referring to. It's a little bit different. Um, means it's through the Perkins Grant. You don't get the stipend and stuff. So there's an additional option for anyone that's not part of that Perkins Blend It 1. Um, and I think that's what you're referring to, Carol. And so, yes, it's the same class, but it will be for anybody that's not participating in the Perkins part of it. Um, and I think Kim is typing a question, so I will see what she has. Carol, did that answer your question? Um, Kim, yes, I, I think that they have... Um, already filled their blend it class with Perkins, but that is something you would have to ask Deb Rogge, or I can ask her too and let you know. Um, I think that that is filled, but you would get the same experience, um, but not with 
your career ed tech teachers like the blended Perkins is um, if you would go and the one day for the one that's not Perkins related is either in Columbus Kearney or Scotts Bluff and Scotts Bluff is like next Monday so that's probably out but Kearney or um, uh, Kearney or Columbus and um, Kim, it's not. Um, why don't you throw your email in there and I'll send you the information. If you want to do that, put it in the chat or just email me and I'll send it to you. I'm not sure which Kim I'm talking to, but I will get you that information. There's a flyer about it. All right, great. Any other questions? All right, thank you for participating and I will send you that information, Kim. And um, Carol, I believe you are part of the Blended Perkins, so we'll probably see you then.